Fall, of course, is a very busy time for area theaters, and that means it's also a busy time for our next guest. Pulse Gazette senior theater critic Chris Rawson here with his monthly roundup of reviews and previews of what's on stage. I've been racing around. I you know, bet you two, have. Two, three, four shows a weekend. It's been fun, of yeah. course. And racing, is that a, a lead into your next, uh, your first uh, show to talk about, Equus? Well, uh, in a way, because it's horses. That's right. what you mean, <laughs> right. It's a sad story, and right. I think it's a story that people know because the play debuted, what, 30 years ago, and then was a movie with Richard Burton. And uh, so the, here it is being revived at the Pittsburgh Public Theater. And it's a story about a very disturbed young man, teenager, who puts out the eyes of some horses and then he has to go for de uh, for to be cured by a psychiatrist. It's really about the psychiatrist, but here you see him with one of his horses. The problem really is kindness. the horse thing has all gotten mixed up in his mind with the religion that his mother has taught him and also his developing sexuality as a teenager. So how do you think they do? I think it's a pretty good production. It, uh, what's happened to me is my attitude towards the play has changed over the years, and I, I find myself really irritated with the psychiatrist who I used to kind of identify with. I right. think that happens to people. Sure. Kiss Me Kate is something that you talked about earlier in yes. your previews. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I mean, what is better than Cole Porter and William Shakespeare as his book writer, uh, you know, and it's a play within a play, and the play within it is Taming of the Shrew, this famous controversial play about misogyny, and then surrounding it is a play about a theater company that's putting on Taming of the Shrew, but the leading man and lady in the theater company are like Petruchio and Caterina, the squabbling couple in Taming of the Shrew. So you've got a musical around a musical, and this is produced, we don't always talk here about student productions, but the, and this is a student production at Point Park University where they have a fabulous uh, undergraduate theater program and very strong dance. So there's like 30 people on stage at the Pittsburgh Playhouse in its final year. This is actually something to see. Yeah, and Romeo and Juliet, what kind of grade do you give it? So, uh, Romeo and Juliet is Shakespeare without Cole Porter, and it's too bad because we kind of <laughs> miss Cole Porter. Uh, this is Picked, which has found a new place uh, in the QED studios Great. on Fifth Avenue. Uh, and they've also found a new place by setting Romeo and Juliet in 1930s Little Italy in New York, although you hardly know it. Uh, mm -hmm. The only performance that really honors that is Martin Giles, who's playing uh, Juliet's father as though he were Robert De Niro. It's a wonderful supporting uh, performance. The Romeo and Juliet are okay. I thought the first act wandered around kind of looking for itself and really, really took the second act until we got into the kind of propulsive motion toward the tragedy. So I'd give it a, you know, a mixed grade. Okay, and how about East Texas Hot Links? So I've been talking about East Texas Hot Links for a while. It's in the small Pittsburgh Playwrights Theater, mm -hmm. 937 Liberty Avenue, right across from the August Wilson Center. It's a fabulous 90-minute play set in 1950s Texas in a colored only bar where the Ku Klux Klan is out there in the woods surrounding them. It's not a happy play, but it's a wonderful cast of eight. You can see them here, yeah. seven of them in any case. Uh, local actors written by Eugene Lee, who you see on your screen, a wonderful actor who's also a playwright. Uh, it's got two weekends to go. I really think this is someone something that people should get up out of their chairs and go see because yeah. they haven't been to the Pittsburgh P Playwrights Theater before. Right, okay, so that one runs through November 5th and you have a little bit longer to see this next one and we actually had the folks on talking about this, I think earlier this week, Bricolage Dodo. Dodo, yeah. And this is so fascinating. I know, I know, you got, my wife and I went and we're in a group of six. You go to the Museum of Art and you're in a group of six and then you're, you're admitted and you go through the Museum of Art and also the Museum of Natural History right. in a group of six but then you get split into a group of three and then maybe one or two. So you take different pathways and you meet people in the museum, actors, of course. Like, I mean, I met the mollusk man, the guy who was showing us all about mollusks. I met a wonderful um, uh, custodian up in sort of a, ca a catwalk. I met Andrew Carnegie's personal assistant, uh, <laughs> who didn't seem to know about the, uh, the Battle of Homestead. It was kind of interesting. Um, and you're seeing the museum in the dark at night. 
uh, kind it's of fun, kind of creepy and kind creepy, of wonderful. Right, yeah. yeah. And uh, and what is it all about? Well, you know, time passes, people die. I mean, what happened to the dodo? What's happening to yeah. all of us? It, it's it's a wonderful experience. I want to go back again so I can take another pathway. Yeah. When we were when they were here, we were still asking a lot of questions. They didn't provide too many answers, but it was a must see kind of thing if you're interested. Um, let's talk about your previews. You want to talk about the hard problem. So the hard problem is a new play by Tom Stoppard, one of the great playwrights, English playwrights, very brainy, very funny. Mm -hmm. And the hard problem is really the contrast between uh, altruism and self-interest. You know, are we altruistic? Are we compassionate because we really are? Or is it a way to get something we want in the world? Or is it given to us by God? Or is it a result of evolution? Or are we hardwired? And it keeps showing up in different ways in this story. And of course, Quantum always performs in a different place. This is in what used to be the Conley Trade School, that big giant building that looms yeah. over the lower hill. It's now called the Energy Innovation Center. I mean, just going to a quantum play is part of the fun. I haven't seen the play yet. It opens tomorrow night. Oh, great. And that one runs until November 19th. Yeah. Um, the Broadway series, The Color Purple. And this is only performing for a few days. Well, a week. A it week. has oh, a week, week, sorry. week performance. And uh, The Color Purple is a story, you know, the Alice Walker novel. Mm -hmm. A lot of people know. And it for, the musical appeared in 2005 and then was revived in 2015. And this is a tour of the Broadway revival. Um, yes. I mean, it's a it's an epic story, you know, of a young black woman traveling through early 20th century southern states. And um, lastly, oh, I'm so yeah, glad we got you. to talk about this on Saturday. There's something really cool that's happening. And what is this? Yeah, I think we can call it a performance a little bit. This is the 200th anniversary of the death of Jane Austen, the great English novelist who died at only age 41. And her final novel is called Persuasion. It was actually published just after she died. So uh, Saturday, the local Jane Austen Society is having an all-day reading from 10 in the morning until 7.30 at night. We're going to read, I say we, are going to read aloud chapter by chapter, the whole persuasion novel. Wow. I get to read the part right at the end, and it's going to be in the English room in the Cathedral of Learning, which I love because that's the room where my wife and I got married. Oh, so fascinating. I didn't know that. Congratulations. This is like so a you can congratulations. Come. When did you get married? Oh, many years ago, <laughs> many years ago, and we are still I'm married. I'm a little late to that. We are still married. That's what you congratulate <laughs> yes, us for. absolutely. But the point is you can go in and out. You right. don't, you, you, sort of drop in and you get a little bit of Jane Austen, then you go on about your Saturday and, and then you, you come back come for back. a little more. Right. Okay. Well, thank you so much to Chris Frawson, senior theater critic for the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette and regular PTL contributor. Thanks.